Hi, my name is Ken Hughes. Welcome back to another episode. Today we are talking all about collaboration, about the importance of collaborating with the customer, inviting the customer in. And every business in the world always talks about this the same way. They always say, we place our customer at the center. And many companies don't really mean that. What they mean is we want to understand our customer so that we can sell them more stuff. But actually what, the, what customer experience philosophy and strategy is about, is about inviting the customer into the process. So today I want to talk about the difference between passive consumerism and active consumerism. And I don't mean active consumerism in terms of eco or sustainability. I mean about moving the consumerist model from passive consumption towards a more involved, active way of thinking. So thinking about capitalism in post-World War II, we had all these factories emitting huge amounts of product. And of course, to match mass production, we have to have mass consumption. And how do you make mass consumption happen when you have to hit the floor, they hit the pedal to the floor in terms of marketing spend, and that's we have all the ad agencies in the 40s and 50s, and we now have people consuming products they don't even need. And, and you know, the ethics of that is questionable. But the mass consumption model is a passive consumption model. The company makes, produces, markets, and the customer buys, consumes. And that's kind of a, a linear model of consumption. Now, what's interesting about collaboration is that we're shifting away from that passive consumption model to a more active consumption model. And the best metaphor for this, I think, is, is TikTok and collaboration and virals. And so, you know, TikTok has a huge amount of dance virals, but obviously they didn't invent the viral. Uh, you know, the viral dates back to when I mean, people passed VHS tapes around. One of the original kind of internet virals was Dancing Baby. Do you remember Dancing Baby? That was back in 1996. And then we had Bad Dad in 1997, that famous man smashing his computer in a cubicle. And in fact, that actually was a, a fake video filmed by the employees of Duranco. They had a video surveillance product they wanted to show and that was how they were showing it. They used to put that video on CDs and hand it out at trade shows. But then of course it just got attached to emails and it went all around the world. So people started sending stuff. And then eventually platforms like YouTube came along as sharing platforms and people were able to share videos easier. But that is still a passive thing. You're still sitting down at this, at this platform consuming video. And so that's a, it's the passive model. But then something like the ice bucket challenge, if you want to stick with kind of virals, uh, you could see the collaboration element of that. So now the ice bucket challenge was, yes, it was a viral, it was being shared all over the world, but it was a case of you've seen this, I challenge you, you now take part, please. So now you're collaborating in the viral, you're consuming it, but then you're also active in producing the next piece. So this is the beginning of collaboration and collaboration culture. And then if you take something like TikTok during the pandemic, TikTok really exploded as a social media platform because people were again, they were doing those TikTok dances, all those viral TikTok dances, they were doing them and then they were sharing them on their platforms. So again, we're drifting from not just being passive, I'm not just watching all the content, I'm getting involved in the content. And then out of that comes the TikTok duet. And that really is what I want to talk about here. The TikTok duet's a really interesting um, kind of metaphor for where collaborative culture and consumerism is going. Because in TikTok, you can take you, one person's content and you can put your own content next to it and produce a whole new piece of content with the two pieces together. I mean, it was originally designed as a duet from music and a lot of it is still used that way. But here, what you start to see is new creative content being built on other people's content continuously. It's a whole collaborative culture. I'm gonna have a look at this one. This is a TikTok chain. It goes on for about four or five minutes. I'm only gonna drop a minute of it into this video. But this is just one lady's TikTok that she sends out there, and then everyone starts to bolt on other pieces. It can be quite funny. Let's just watch a minute of it. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. Can we stop duetting videos when we have absolutely nothing to add to them? I don't, I don't need to know what you looked like watching that TikTok. And that, that goes on and on. You can find the full version on, on TikTok or on YouTube yourself. But you can see what I'm saying here is that the collaborative model is really, really interesting. People can continuously collaborate with each other to create new things. 
In fact, on music, there's even, I'm not going to drop another one in here, but if you want to follow this link here, look, follow that link. If you want to watch another TikTok chain to do with music and have people take one sound, build new sounds, and create a whole new song from nothing. So what we're saying here is this is really a collaborative space. So we have a whole new set of consumers growing up in this collaborative space, wanting to be part of a process, not just consume the end product. And if you think about this, like if you're a musician, years ago you would make a music video and you would load that up onto YouTube or onto, onto Vivo and people would consume it. And that's a one directional conversation. I, can, I produce, you consume. And again, that's the passive consumerist model. Whereas today that same musician could put up a video on TikTok, they could produce their music video and they could leave some lyrics blank they could have some harmonies in the chorus, which you yourself as the fan can record on TikTok. And now you're in the music video. So you're now collaborating with the video. You're now in your favorite musician's video. And that's the difference between active and passive consumerism. We're inviting the consumer in, not only to the consumption moment, but back along the chain to the production moment, to research and development. To, and this isn't just about research and consumer insight. This is about actually having a culture where the consumer belongs, where they feel they belong to the system. And obviously consumer goods companies have tried this over the years. You know, you've had people inventing new recipes of crisps. We've written people's names on cans. And, you know, we're trying to involve them a little bit. But what I want you to think about from a branding and a business point of view, collaboration is key. We're in this sharing economy, this peer-to-peer -peer economy. So we really, really need to understand how can we better collaborate with our customers. Really important, of course, in B2B businesses, but also in B2C businesses. How can we invite them in? How can they feel that they belong inside? And that's what we really mean by putting the customer at the center. They, they are in the business, they are part of the business, not some inconvenient end point on a customer journey. That said, let's all hit TikTok and learn the TikTok dances. All right, here we go. Until next time, I'm Ken Hughes.